Hello everyone and welcome back to my playthrough of The Wolf Among Us. Last time we made our way to Auntie Greenleaf's apartment and found out that she has a whole tree um, from the old world, from the old fable world that she uses for her black market spells. Um, Snow basically ordered us to destroy it, but we figured that she's, you know, a witch very resourceful witch. She has stuff from the old world. She could be of use to us. She can join the witches in the, um, what was it? The sixth floor, the 12th floor, whatever they fucking called it. The other coterie of witches. Let's put it that way. Or coven of witches. Um, and she could be of use to the community. Uh, she told us in desperation that Crane went back to the pudding and pie uh, after grabbing a ring of dispel that no longer works to try and get the girls to basically, you know, prove that he's innocent. Because, you know, they keep on saying, I, like, uh, my lips are sealed. And he's trying to get rid of that so they can actually talk. We made our way to the Pudding and Pie, found that Ichabod was kind of going insane, like shaking the shit out of Nerissa, trying to get her to talk, but the ring doesn't work. So, he basically kind of came clean. And as we were taking him away, we got surrounded, kind of, in a back alley with the Tweedles, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, and Bloody Mary, of all people. All hell kind of broke loose as they were shooting, the Tweedles were buckshotting us, and we just kind of let loose as the, as the big bad wolf. But Bloody Mary, of course had a silver bullet, which apparently works not only on werewolves, but the big bad wolf as well. And they made her, their way off with Crane, thus ending the episode, the chapter. So we are now currently on episode four, In Sheep's Clothing. Let's start her off. If you can't afford to look human, you're going to the farm. It's as simple as that. Do you have any idea how much it costs to have an entire family in glamour? I can't finish the mirror. It's missing a piece. Crane must have taken a shard with him. The open arms. Enjoy your stay. Thanks, Bigby. And thanks for covering for me last time, too. Bigby? How could you do this to me? I guess I finally see you for who you are! Tell me who did it! Just tell me who did it! I know you know! I don't think he did it. What? Look at him. Do you really think this man murdered these women? Nope. <laughs> oh yeah, and we let Tweedle D survive. It was a good show. But, you know... Just... Take him, okay? Take Crane. Well, this is going to be a beautiful relationship we have with you guys. Really, I mean it. Out with the old, in with the new. Long live the queen. That bitch. Yeah, your arm should be in a fucking cast, buddy. Bullets are a nasty business. The silver slug deformed and shredded on impact. He'll be okay, though. Hmm? He'll be okay? His internal organs are positively riddled. If I don't extract every single scrap of silver, he's liable to suffer some long-term toxicosis. Easy there. Try not to move. We can't keep meeting this way, old boy. I figured I'd be done before you were conscious, but there's little I can do for the pain. Just stay still and let me finish. What? What happened to me? There was. You got lucky. 
and found yourself in the care of a most skillful surgeon. Me. Please, Bigby, don't move it. Doctor. Look, I'm a bit engaged saving his life at the moment. But if the fractured extremity concerns him that much, he can set it himself. Okay. <laughs> if you say so. Oh, God. For heaven's sake. Oh, I was going to do it. <laughs> See now? That wasn't so difficult, was it? I was literally about to do it. That'll do. You're probably better off. This way I won't have to reset it later. He's lucky to be alive. And he won't be next time if he keeps going like this. He didn't listen to me before. Maybe he'll listen to you. I don't know about that. Well, he should. There are limits to what even I can do. <laughs> it's not like I asked for this shit to happen. Yes, but it's not like you actively discouraged it either. What should I have done? Just literally just give Crane up? Every time someone Excuse comes with a me, fucking what, shotgun, am I just perhaps supposed to acquiesce? If you gave me a few minutes to finish with him. I, I think I should stay. At least until he's... out of the woods. Believe me, Bigby couldn't be in better hands. And I need the space to work, so... if you wouldn't mind, we'd appreciate the headroom. Stick around, all right? I don't know if I trust this guy. Oh, please. I could do this with my optic nerve severed. We'll be done in a moment. Just please, give us the time. Hey, Doc, how much longer? Colin, leave him be. It's finished when it's finished. Because I once watched a vet sew a turtle together in ten minutes flat. Colin, you're not even supposed to be here right now. Oh, really? Where am I supposed to be? I'm here to take care of my friend. W with what? Your hooves? Hey, listen, please, lady. Please, keep it down back there. Thank you. Could you please not distract the doctor while he has my chest cut open? Yes, that would be helpful. <sighs> there. All done. Great. This isn't a habit you should keep to. Having visits with me. And, well, this time... This time was no joke. Eat as many metal shellings as you see fit, but take just one more silver round near your heart, and the only place I'll be visiting you is the morgue. Miss White. He'll be fine for light duty, if he can figure out what that means. Sure. He knows what it means. It's just been an unusual couple of days. I know, but please, don't give him the excuse. His body will eventually give out. Take care of him, please. I will. He'll need rest, I assume? Sleep mostly. Just keep watch. And make sure he doesn't get into further altercations. I'm right here, guys. I'm right here, guys. Come on. Anyways, guard against, as they say. Miss White? Sheriff? Colin? Swiney? It's <laughs> a little animosity there. Jesus, Bigby, you look fucking... You look like shit. So... How do you, um, feel? It's Big B, Snow. He'll be okay. Hell, I seen him take worse. Not much worse. Not as good as can be expected, I think. So, not well then. I'm glad you're not dead. Eh, we said the same thing to her. You, uh... You stopped breathing, you know, when you passed out or, or died, I guess. It, um, it kind of scared the hell out of me. I've never seen you like that. And when Swineheart arrived, you know him, he's never worried. And even he thought you were, I don't know. I'm here for you. It was just awful. Snow. I'd never leave you. Yeah, you were really fucked up, man. You look like when you take an action figure and bend its limbs the wrong way. Colin... I'm just saying I was worried about him is all. The guy hasn't had a night's rest in days. Well, I'll get some rest when this whole thing is done. 
What whole thing? What's even happening out there? I mean, do you guys have like a plan or something? And who should I be asking? Should I be worried about the Crooked Man taking over? Or is Crane still the thing? Uh, the Crooked yeah. Man, Bloody Mary, the Tweedles. This is bigger than what I thought it was. Yeah. The Crooked Man came out of the shadows for a reason. For him to attack us so blatantly like that. He either feels invincible or desperate. Well, Most likely those the are my two options. I don't think I'd pick desperate. Yeah, what no kidding. You, you traded Crane to save Bigby. I'm just saying, that's not exactly something you do when you're playing with house money. So he called my bluff. It's not like I'm gonna let Bloody Mary just murder... It was a split-second decision, and I don't care how it looked. Yeah, uh, thanks, Snow, for all that back there. No problem. Thanks? You're not pissed that Crane's flown the coop? Or that the Crooked Man thinks he's got Snow under his thumb? We're all mad about it, Colin, but it's not like we had a strong choice in the She did what she had what to do, yeah. What else could Snow do? If she didn't hand him over, my ass would be down the witching well. Crane still would have been taken. Okay, okay, I'll take your word for it. All I care about right now is... Just what does the Crooked Man want out of this? I thought he was just a... Lone Shark. But clearly, he's operating in other circles. It can't just be about Crane, right? Getting him out of town? Is this all about the murders? Crane can't be useful to him anymore. So what could this have to do with Faith and Lily? Crane was used. How long has this stuff been going on? Clearly Crane he's been was used. a puppet. And the Crooked Man worked the strings. This is all about control of Fabled Town. But then what do prostitutes have to do with it? Lily? And Faith? I don't know how it all works out yet, but I know it does. Somehow. The Crooked Man declared war against us last night. At least that's what I thought when it happened. But now I see this war has been going on for years. We just haven't noticed it because our way of doing things is broken. We need to do things the right way. What does that mean, the right way? What do you think I mean? I don't know, but it suspiciously sounds like your way. Bigby's the one on the front lines. You can't give him a leash. He doesn't work that way. A little restraint and thought right, behind what do you will mean? never hurt anyone, Colin. Yeah, wait, what do you mean? What is this right way? We haven't been doing a good job. You and I. So, starting now, we do everything cut and dried. By the book, straight as an arrow. Pure as driven snow. I'm not saying I'm the arbiter of- Sure you're not. This town has enough monsters. What happened last night, what you turned into, it can't happen again. We need monsters to fight monsters. Colin, if I really believed that we needed him to lose his flippin' mind at a moment's notice, then that would mean I'd lost all faith in our ability to help this town. Just let that side of you be done, uh, look, okay? Look, I had be no done, choice. I literally had no choice. We were under attack, Snow. What did you expect me to do? There are degrees. Degrees? I only ever do what's necessary. Seriously. Really? Do you believe him? Yeah, I do. Look, Bigby, I care about how this is done just as much as I care about it getting done. So for that, you want to give him a handicap? Like the bad guys will worry if shit gets sloppy. Everybody wants Bigby to smile and shave and take a shower now and then. Hell, I'm practically the president of the Bigby Don't Be Such a Dick Club. But this is the wrong fucking time to put shackles I on. I agree with Colin. Well, I'm sorry, someone, someone understands. Thanks, Colin. He'll get the job done. Just let him do it. I'm going to. I'm going to let you do it, okay? It's just that now that I'm deputy mayor, I need your respect. You have it. And this situation has to end. What situation? All unglamored fables starting today have to go and stay at the farm. Oh, give me a fucking break. Are you gonna let her talk to me like that? It's been the rule for a reason, Colin. And Bigby knows it's for the best of the town. It keeps everybody out of trouble. <sighs> and what if a Mundy does see me, huh? 
I'm a pig, not a mouse with a hat and a cane. They know what a pig is. It's not the end of the world. Look, everyone just calm down, all right? I'm perfectly calm. I'm not. Tell me right now, what's it gonna be, Bigby? Wolf's residence. That's rude. Oh, Buffkin, what is it? Okay, I'll let him know. Thanks. Guess who's waiting in your office right now? Nerissa. Brain? Nerissa? Oh. That broad from the pudding and pie? Yes. Apparently, she told Buffkin that she has something she needs to talk to you about. But that she'll only tell you. And what do you think that could be? Ah, uh, Bigby's got an admirer. You always do well with the, uh, disenfranchised. Oh, fuck something you. about your prickly demeanor attracts him like a moth. She probably thing. knows something. She knows something. Yeah. She's helped me a little with the case. Maybe she has something else. Maybe she does. I should get back to the business office. I've left Buffkin alone for too long taking calls. And I should probably change out of these clothes. Consider the discussion tabled, but not over. Let me know when you're done with Nerissa. Aye, aye, Captain. She's a piece of work. Hey, you're not really gonna send me to the farm, are you? I mean, she seemed real serious about it, but I can still hang out here. Snow will change right? her mind. I don't know. Snow will come around. She's just... You know, the crane thing hit her hard, and she doesn't really know who her friends are right now. Oh, okay. I get it. Don't worry about it. Thanks, Bigby. I like Colin. Colin's sassy, but he's he he's got good intentions in mind. Like he's he actually cares. It's I really love the dynamic that you know on the pages in the storybook, they're enemies. But in the real world, when you know everyone is in a is in a really bad place, the wolf and the pig can get along. Like how how fucking cool is that? And they're like they're buddies. Like they're they're honest with each other. Colin's not even like tiptoeing around the fact that like this fucker can eat me anytime and kill me anytime. No. He's like, look, man, we're we're friends, right? Like, we're looking out for each other. It, I that's really cool. I really love the Big B and Colin dynamic. See what Nerissa's got to say. Oh man, I haven't had cherry coke in such a long time. It's so good. Crazy how fucked up things have gotten. We've lost practically like our biggest lead. It's Crane. But then again, I guess Crane wouldn't really have known anything. I still don't know why they took Crane. Like the real reason. Hi, Sheriff. Sup? Hi, Narissa. Have a seat. This is like the first time we've seen her office. Legit. We've got an old school typewriter. That's so funny. I guess it was the 80s. I keep forgetting that. I, um, are you okay? You didn't look good last night. I wasn't sure you'd be, you know, around if I came by. I've been better. Let's just say I've been better. <coughs> Yeah, smokes makes everything better. Huffin' Puffs. <laughs> Not many people smoke those. Well, it's la dee da, Miss Fancy Pants. 
So what brings you here? Thanks. So what is it you wanted to talk to me about? I know what you did for me, sending me to the open arms. And I think you want to help me again. There's not a lot that I can talk about. You know that. So that spell Crane was trying to break. It's not just while you're at work, huh? His lips are sealed. What I mean is, I don't want to waste your time, but I don't want you wasting your own time either. Back in the dressing room, at the pudding and pie, I told you what I was looking for, and you found a way to tell me. You sent me to the open arms. Maybe that'll work again? You can try. I just... Go ahead. It... might work. Okay. You're here because the crooked man just sent Crane to the bottom of my list of worries. And you have something you want to say about that, right? These lips are sealed. If I could answer you just like that, I wouldn't have had to make that appointment with you. No, I guess not. Okay. Let's be smart Sometimes, about this. We have to find our way through life on our own, grasping and fumbling in the dark. I... I used to have friends to help me find my way, but now they're gone, and I don't know what to do. Are you trying to say something about Faith and Lily? What I'm saying is friends matter. And I... I don't have any left. So I hope you're looking after yours. Are you? Who are you talking about? Are my friends in danger? <sighs> I'm sorry. I thought I could do this. I need you to know... I want to help, but... But... But your lips are sealed. I'm... sorry if I'm wasting your time. I thought I knew how to say it. Ribbons. Faith wore one too. Do you like it? Hmm? Do you? How can I? It's a tool to keep you stuck in that life. Subservient. That's why you can't tell me anything. It's the ribbon, isn't it? Can't we just take the ribbon off? No! His lips are sealed! What? You can't! Just stay back! You can't do that! Slow down. It's alright. I'm not gonna do anything. Please, don't. <sighs> okay. Freaked out hard, eh? So the ribbons, if you take them off... If anyone finds out I came here... That's probably Snow. Listen, Sheriff. Can you keep this conversation between us? I could be in a lot of... trouble. I shouldn't be talking to you. I'm gonna have to tell Snow. She has to know about the ribbons. If you have to, just... don't tell anyone else. Okay, no problem. Sorry, I just need to talk to the Sheriff for a moment. Please excuse us. One minute. I might have a new lead for you, but I don't know how solid it is. 
Beauty and Beast called the office just now. They said they wanted to talk to you about something. I wonder if they've heard about Crane. Thank you for listening, Sheriff. You should go on to your next business. I don't think you'll be wasting your time. No, wait, you don't have to go. <clears throat> that was... abrupt. That's one way to send a message. What did she tell you? I didn't mean to rush her out. Did you get anything from her? She couldn't really say anything. The magic that Crane was talking about, it's in the ribbon. And you can't take the ribbon off, or... It's how Faith and Lily died. Okay then. Good work. So, about Beauty and Beast, do you think there's something to it? Is this the right place to look? What could they know about the Crooked Man? Or do you think they just heard about last night, and they're scared about what's been going on? Beauty told me she had to take out a loan from the Crooked Man. Seems like a pretty bad deal. I can only imagine what they're thinking now. You didn't even press anything. Press the space we between the buttons. We need to solve this before something else happens. Who knows what? I have other matters to attend to. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna stop it there. Um, so, concerning the ribbons, uh, yeah, it really does seem like the ribbons are tied to, um, you know, it... Okay. There's a story I remember from when I was a kid. I don't remember what it's called or what the actual story was about. But I remember about uh, there was a girl who had a ribbon around her neck. And she basically, like, uh, when she was a kid, like, she met a boy and they would, like, hang out together. And he would always ask about the ribbon. Um, and she would say, like, I forgot what she would say. Like, it's a secret or something like that. Like, maybe someday I'll tell you. Um, and I believe, you know, they grow up, um, you know, they start dating, they eventually get married and, you know, she, he always asks about the ribbon and she never tells him. And one day when they're old, um, she says like, I'll, you know, like, I'll finally tell you what the ribbon's about. And then she undoes the ribbon and her head falls off. And that's basically the end of the story. For, again, from what I remember, it's been decades, like multiple decades since I've actually read that story. Um, again, don't know what it's called, uh, but I believe that was the basic gist of it. The ribbon was holding her, her head to her neck, basically. Or, I guess when you removed it, it's what lopped it off. Not really sure. So that's, what's, uh, that's what seems to be going on in this case. Um... Uh, it's a very obscure story, to my knowledge. Not many people would know of it. Excuse me. But um, it is cool that they've drawn on, like, again, like the more obscure fairy tales that you wouldn't, not many people would actually really know about. Like the Crooked Man. Like, I, I've, outside of a couple of horror movies, I've never actually really heard of the Crooked Man. I don't know what his story is. Um,. Even Bloody Mary, like, I don't know what her origins are. I don't even know if she's a fable or if she's just an urban legend. Um, I don't know what her roots are. But regardless, it's it, it's cool to see, like, how all these different characters are, you know, butting heads up against each other, you know. It, it's interesting. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys are enjoying the story. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.